Hi guys, it's October 9, 2020, and you're watching me, Nikki Yu, Friday. It's a free Friday class again. And today we're going to talk about the future of packaging. The category today is Alternative Sustainable Packaging Revolution. We need to end the use of plastics. We need to end um, the number of waste. And that is something that we want to share to everyone across the world. Uh, thank you for watching this free Friday class. Today Smurfit Kappa Group. Let me invite uh, all of you, of course, that this is uh, a part of Awesome 10X. Every Friday is free. But uh, just as cross promotion, you can always join our classes. Uh, for Friday, it's free. But Monday to Thursday, if you do want to join, you have to be an Awesome 10X member. It's www.awesome10x.com. We offer classes $40 a month or 2,000 pesos a month. Just subscribe in the website www.awesome10x.com. Now let's begin. So the world is truly uh, going into sustainable packaging for a good reason for the planet. Why don't we watch just two minutes about what most sustainable packaging is? Watch this first. Play. So finally, I'd like to introduce Jocelyne Eret. Uh, she's from The Right Packaging. But um, Jocelyne is going to be challenging some... No, no. Before starting my presentation, I would like to show you a short film, a short video, in order to give you a little bit of context. Why is it that increasingly people think packaging is wasteful and useless? Unnecessary packaging creates unwanted waste. The incorrect use leads to bans and the declaration of plastic war. Our mistakes lead consumers to consider packaging as a danger to the environment. In short, too much packaging has killed packaging. Packaging, single use or reused is a hollow debate. We need both. Sometimes single use plastic saves our lives. As online and offline shopping have merged, the main issue for omni-channel products in the next years will be to avoid visible waste from non-recovered packaging and invisible waste from the wasted space in packaging, all the while reducing costs and creating a new consumer experience. This is the right time to change to avoid further bans on packaging. Sometimes people forget that we have used packaging throughout history to transport and preserve products. There is no bad or good material, only wrong or right packaging. To make the right choice, we need to have the full picture and we need to consider what is vital for human life. In this Anthropocene time, we humans are changing our environment and packaging choices have a major impact. The time to act is over. Change is already here. It's urgent we adapt. We can survive three minutes without air, three days without water and three months without food. We must choose the right packaging whilst considering its effect on lowering air pollution. Packaging manufactured with clean energy and lightweight material reduces air pollution. Access to fresh water is one of the biggest environmental issues. Packaging made with raw materials which use water and pesticides will affect it. Preserving land and food. We currently consume our available annual global resource earlier each year and at this rate, by 2050, we will need three times more resources than we currently have. So packaging has a crucial role to play in resource preservation. Mismanaged waste is the real issue. The future of sustainable packaging requires the right choice of material with a reduced negative impact on the three human needs and a lower impact on the environment. The circular economy alone is not enough. We need filling economy to avoid invisible waste. Stop the myth. There is no wrong or right material, only wrong or right packaging. Uh, I remember when I was a student, 
you can watch more of those. Uh, I'll share to you a lot of videos, but this is also a discussion uh, worldwide. 15 to 20 percent of all consumer go goods sold via the internet today. Uh, the need for packaging to deliver goods quickly and cheaply is increasing as a global focus on sustainability gains momentum. Paper and packaging industry has responded by starting to move away from single-use pl plastics into alternative materials, also giving more choices to the consumer, uh, explains Christy Grippy of Goldman Sachs Investment Banking Division in the episode, The Long and Short of It. I'll show, I'll show you a two-minute of that video clip. In some cases, companies are also allowing consumers to make the decision on whether they would like to get a cheaper form of packaging that is not as uh, sustainable or whether they want to pay a premium for a more recyclable form of packaging that's more environmentally friendly. Over the next decade, Grippy expects in addition to higher recycled and biodegradable materials, we will also see less packaging use overall. Whether Whatever good you get likely doesn't come in a box within a box <clears throat> protected by other packaging, but comes simply within the box itself, delivered with a label right to your door. Just some stats, uh, when I studied uh, in China, for instance, I was studying the corrugated box packaging, especially in the rice of Alibaba, JD, and Pintuoto. As part of my e-commerce study, in just the last seven years, we made from 1 billion boxes to 70 billion boxes in just seven years. I was really astonished. Uh, that statistic was something like 2012 to 2019. Of course, in 2020, we've seen another 100% surge on e-commerce, so that means that we're talking about 140 billion boxes. So these are a lot. Um, let me show you a two minute video about unpacking the ship to sustainable packaging. Today, approximately 15 to 20 percent of all goods that are sold are sold via the internet and shipped via some e-commerce route. And of course, what that means is there is a need for more and more packaging in the world. there's been a distinct shift in how investors perceive the space. If you went back to 2010, 2012, paper and packaging was firmly in the industrial sector, so a manufactured good, something that was very necessary. Over the past two to three years, however, paper and packaging manufacturers have somewhat decoupled from the traditional industrial manufacturing base and move them closer towards what I would call a consumer style. And I think that's part to do with the fact that consumer packaged goods manufacturers look to differentiate themselves, not just on the content that they're providing, but the package that it comes in. So to take as an example cosmetics, packaging is part of the cell because the formulations of what's inside doesn't really change. And so unique, interesting packaging to drive a purchase is at the heart of the industry. Within the packaging world, there are major themes emerging around consumption. We see more and more insatiable desire for people to buy more things, have those things delivered to them quickly and conveniently. The second theme is that there's been a lot of focus recently around the movement away from single-use plastics and into alternative materials, something made of a plant-based fiber. We're seeing our paper and packaging clients incorporate some of these ideas into their business model to drive higher top-line returns. Some of the ways that they're doing that is to shift their mix towards more premium types of packaging, allowing the consumer to make the decision on whether they would like a cheaper form of packaging that is not as sustainable, or if they'd rather pay a premium for a more recyclable form of packaging that's more environmentally friendly. In five to 10 years, with the continued rise of e-commerce, our expectation is that the need for packaging will continue to increase. But the form of that packaging will be different. We'll have higher recycled material content, and so things like AirPods within the box to protect your good will be made of recycled materials or will be biodegradable themselves. We'll also have less packaging that comes out, and so the, the shipment of whatever good you get likely doesn't come a box within a box protected by other packaging, but comes simply within the box itself delivered with a label right to your door. Um, indeed, I remember when, uh, just a side note, I remember actually uh, enjoying the fact that in the Philippines, for instance, our Jollibee uh, Chicken Joy is a paper packaging. So they have shifted out of, um, shift, they shifted out of these uh, styrofoam um, 
Tyro Boards, remember that. And of course, the Philippine Quezon City uh, actually um, also promoted the, the use of uh, paper instead of plastics. I want to show to you what has happened in the world because of this, um, and I like it, it's the Sustainable Packaging Revolution. Uh, this is a documentary, we'll watch those videos if we have time. This is actually also a very good video, Closing the Loop, the End of Disposable Plastics. This is a discussion about actually TerraCycle, a company that I believe is also a wonderful company, although it is still private. Although I think they, they might be listed someday, uh, so we'll discuss it. Today's topic is Smurfette Kappa Group, SKG. It is in London, so we're talking about a, a London company, although it's also listed in the U.S. Uh, in the OTC market. You could see that in the last uh, perhaps six years, yes, it traveled from 1,000 pence to 3,000 pence, and it's going near all-time highs. We're going to discuss what this company does and let's try to investigate on whether it fits your portfolio. The Smurfit Kappa Group is Europe's leading corrugated packaging company. It's one of the leading paper-based packaging companies in the world. It's listed in the London Stock Exchange and is a constituent of the FTSE 100 Index. The stock price, if you're uh, thinking about US, is SMFTF OTC market $39 in US. It's about 3,000 pounds. 3,000 pence, so that would be about 30 pounds in uh, Europe. This is a video about Smurfit Kappa. I think you have to watch this, so we'll watch this together. It's about their factory and what the company has been doing. So watch this first. Smurfit Kappa is a world-leading paper-based packaging company that covers the whole paper-based packaging chain. From paper production to design and production of attractive, practical and innovative products. Smurfit Kappa has operations at about 370 locations worldwide. One of these is in Piteå in northern Sweden. This is where you will find Europe's largest craft liner mill, which every year produces over 700,000 tons of craft liner, a type of paper that is used primarily as the outer layer of corrugated packaging. Smurfit Kappa PTO also has an important role to play in the local area, as it is the municipality's largest private employer, with about 500 employees on its books. To describe the plant's paper production, we first need to head into the forest because this is where everything starts. Smurfit Kappa PTO is a craft liner mill because the paper is essentially made of virgin fibers, that is to say, with wood from the forest as the raw material. With forest as the source of our paper, sustainability is an important keyword. We are aware of that our work is on a responsible way, where our raw materials and processes have a sustainable origin. All our mass of wood that we use is certified for sustainable landscaping. This means, for example, that we have looked at where our trees and wood come from, and for every tree that is harvested, we plant three new ones. After logging, the wood we use as our raw material is transported to the mill. The first thing that is done upon arrival is a measurement of the logs to assess its quality and volume. This check is carried out by an independent organization. Every day, the mill consumes the equivalent of 150 trucks with pulp wood. Usually about 60,000 cubic meters of wood is stored here at the wood yard. This is usually enough for 10 days production. When the wood is unloaded, it is either placed on the wood yard or directly onto one of the feeder tables from where the wood is transported into the wood room. The mill has two separate lines, one for softwood and one for hardwood. The first thing that happens when the wood enters the wood room is that the logs are debarked in a debarking drum. The bark is then used as fuel in the plant's biomass boiler. After being debarked, the logs are chipped. The two lines have a combined capacity that enables them to chip 600 cubic meters of wood per hour. The chips are placed in so-called chip piles, with softwood and hardwood kept separate. The chips are then blown through large pipes all the way from the pile-up to the pulp mill. The chips need to be cooked to become pulp. 
White liquor is added during this cooking process. The wood chips are fed into the top of large continuous digesters. The mill has two digesters, one for softwood pulp and one for hardwood pulp. The wood chips are cooked under pressure for three to six hours and move slowly to the bottom of the digester. Raw wood contains lignin, which acts like a glue between... So I wouldn't finish the video, but it's essentially teaching our people how a wood log becomes paper how the chemicals are recycled, how energy is in district heating is produced, and how valuable the byproducts are uh, in utilizing to produce biofuel, among other things. Let's watch the CEO in telling us the future of packaging in the next 10 years. There's a five-minute video. Changing attitudes towards plastic is presenting great opportunities for other materials and their manufacturers. We visited one of the world's largest packaging companies, Smurfit Kappa, at its Global Experience Center in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, where a team are working on paper-based packaging solutions for clients from all over the world, all aiming to radically reduce the amount of plastic in their packaging. Smurfit Kappa's Vice President of Innovation and Development, Arco Birkenbosch, introduced us to some of the latest product designs created by the team here in Amsterdam. This is, uh, as we call it, agro paper. It's 100% paper, it's compostable, it's fully recyclable, and it's used in growing agriculture, especially in Spain, and we're rolling it now out all over Europe. So you have to imagine that this paper is put on the land, and the crops are planted through it, and then they grow and at the end of the season they don't have to remove the paper, it's just plowed into the ground and is even a kind of fertilizer for the ground. So it replaces 720,000 tons of polyethylene that was used until now. This is the back-in-box solution and sometimes it's very challenging. If you have something like this, like a plastic bottle for ketchup, you can't replace it 100% by paper since paper sim sim simply doesn't have the most barrier to do it. So what we invented was a back-in-box solution for that. In this way, you have a plastic bag in there, you have a corrugated box, and you have reduced the amount of plastic with 60%. Other examples of that is what we have done for tight, for detergent. Since inside the box there's a slope integrator, so the plastic, the bag filled with detergent is on the slope, so that gravity really pushes the last piece of detergent out of the tap into your holder for the washing machine. This is a parcel solution, so it's for the e-commerce channel. So what we've done is we've glued a paper inside the box, which you wrap around the product. So again, it's all paper solutions. While in the past, you needed this kind of bubble plastic to wrap the product. So it's a 100% replacement of a plastic by paper-based solution. And again, for the consumer and the box and the holder can all go in the same recycling system. In the past, these kind of bottles were sold with stretch wrap around it. And that hold them together, but is not very sustainable and created a very unsustainable image. So we developed the Nor Grip. You have this for two bottles, for big bottles, for small bottles. Very convenient to handle and 100% paper-based. As food producers and retailers move away from plastic in favor of cardboard, the pressure is on to engineer waterproof and protective coatings that can bring the properties of plastic to cardboard, something Smurfit Kappa is taking very seriously. To innovate and to stretch the functionality of paper, especially in the areas of moisture and durability. We look at our production processes, we look at our raw materials, we look at applying different ingredients, different fiber types to the paper, and we're also looking at can we apply coatings. I think the main challenge is to have a coating that together with the paper stays recyclable. So what we are looking in is developing coatings that play their role between let's say 0 and 60 degrees but as soon as they come in a typical paper recycling system they dissolve and they create no additional waste in the process. We are looking for coatings that are based on renewable resources. So if we look at coatings, we're looking at coatings that are based on starch of corn or wheat or all kinds of natural materials and we see if we can modify this kind of coatings to apply them to paper to 
probably never make paper fully water resistant, but at least stretch the limit so we can do different applications with our paper. With sustainability increasingly becoming a priority across all industries, Smurfit Kappa's CEO, Tony Smurfit, sees great opportunity for the business. It's a very exciting time for us. Uh, when you see the, the, the macro trends moving in our favor, and I think one of the more important things that's really moving in our favor is people's attitude, especially executives, senior executives, who are really embracing the concept of sustainability. And I think you see the replacement of really unsustainable materials, and that's something that you know our customers are really looking forward to, uh, to embracing. As you always know, we always told you that the reason why we can make 10x industry uh, returns is because we are replacing something, we are rendering something obsolete, something is becoming a Jurassic Park, and something new is replacing that. And in, in my view, there's a secular shift, uh, just like how um, we were saying that uh, the world was going to electric, to solar, to renewable energy away from fossil fuels. We in Austin 10X also believe that the world in the next decade will have less usage of plastics and more usage of sustainable packaging. You'll learn more about the company's, um, uh, company's role in making sure that we are going to go to sustainable packaging. Why should you invest in Smurfit Kappa? So this came straight from their own website. They said that you should invest in Smurfit Kappa because the corrugated packaging market is expected to reach $317 billion in just three years. The company's monthly corrugated shipments have risen consistently since 1990. The growth has been driven by e-commerce. So we've seen that the number of billions of boxes have been growing worldwide. Discount retailers, corrugated is a sustainable, renewable, biodegradable solution. If you are aware that uh, all these boxes are of paper, what you see equals money. An integrated approach delivering superior quality earnings throughout the cycle. They produce both the paper and the box. They have a control over sustainable sourcing and they have security of supply in all market conditions. They are the leader in the industry, increasingly embedded in solving the challenges of all their customers. A while ago, you saw Procter & Gamble. Uh, they, I'll show you later all the customers of Smurfit Kappa. Smart applications and machine systems expertise, shelf smart, supply smart, e-smart machine systems. They've got 43 innovation awards just in 2019. They're a pioneer in sustainability, invested over 5 million uh, pounds in our local, uh, sorry, I think that's euros, sorry, 5 million euros in our local communities each year, funding education. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is, that is pounds, sorry. Yeah, that's pounds, 5 million pounds. Uh, health, well-being, and environment in the communities we operate in, helping our customers reduce their environmental footprint. Let me show to you what's happening in the world. H&M, of course, is a Swedish company that we also believe in. Uh, we have made a class about the data-driven nature of H&M. Uh, for those who are aware, H&M has been doing well in terms of earnings recently because turning around their company ship because of data, but also I like H&M for their sustainability. This is an example of a shopping bag from H&M, hence Moritz, that transforms into a clothes hanger. So the shopping bag that turns into a clothes hanger. Of course, uh, there's a lot of examples. The reasons uh, about sustainable packaging, it's very simple right now, becoming a higher priority for both brands and customers. Uh, McDonald's has announced that they want to be 100% renewable and recyclable by 2025. McDonald's Global, that is global. Millennials, of course, are pushing brands to be more socially and environmentally responsible. Good thing for millennials. Uh, it's a very clear that eco-friendly packaging is clearly more than just a buzzword. In fact, it is a necessity. Oops. Sorry. Wait lang, ha? What's happening here? I have many reasons why we should invest in, uh, uh, wait, uh, let me fix something wrong with my uh, slides. Okay, no worries. But uh, a few things, maybe we'll go to the results uh, and the earnings reports. Uh, what was the impact of COVID-19 on the business of Smurfit Kappa? They've got 80 years of experience. They've got an innovative approach. Those are all videos. This is actually a five-minute video about how they're doing sustainable packaging. Uh, it's a lot of videos, but I think that is a, it's the best way to learn about the company. 
So these are their initiatives to reduce packaging waste by creating more sustainable packaging. And there has been a true shift away from uh, plastic and into paper, suggesting consistent growth. Better planet packaging. Watch. Packaging waste is one of the biggest challenges facing our environment. As leaders in sustainable packaging, Smurfit Kappa believes we have a responsibility to help reduce packaging waste. To do this, we're using our expertise in design, innovation and recycling to develop more sustainable packaging solutions. We're also inviting businesses, designers and engineers to partner with us to design, innovate, collaborate and create better planet packaging. Together, let's make packaging waste extinct. We agree with that. Um, we are here to make sure that Jurassic Park plastic goes extinct. Uh, we don't invest in dinosaurs. That is our mantra here in Austin Phoenix. And we actually want them Packet. as much as we can. Uh huh. Wait up. Although we know that the shift is going to take time, we do think that in a decade's time, we will be reducing uh, our usage of plastic or it will really be very small. Uh, at the very least, we want this to become big. Let's take a look at their annual report. Smurfit Kappa, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. We'll go to the next uh, 2020 numbers. Fashion's number one label for e-commerce packaging is Smurfit Kappa. Uh, who are their clients, who are the investors, et cetera, et cetera. We'll read more. Uh, let's take a look at the trends happening. Pack help, sustainable packaging. I'll go to that. Also, this is an important company, although it is something that is still private. Uh, they have those some SEC filings, so that gives me hope that they will be listed somehow within the next year or so. Uh, Tom Jackie of TerraCycle. This is a company that I would believe in and is also an awesome 10x company in the same category, same trends. But let's read about what, what's happening in the industry. Smurfit Kappa says that, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's highlight everything. They've got an international customer base. Uh, they've got diversified uh, customer base with over 64,000 customers worldwide, 45,000 employees. Actually, this 350 is not true. It's already 370 locations across 35 countries. They've got locations in Europe, 22 countries, 13 in America. I have a video. Uh, let's not go to the video. There's also a suggestion by a client. He said that he was in Canton Fair uh, last year. Given the impending ban in Europe, most of the Westerners have been inquiring and looking at the plastic packaging alternatives already. China has banned plastic waste, and it has, this has already accelerated the shift. Uh, and uh, most Chinese factories are actually going eco-friendly. So this is a really huge, uh, huge uh, secular trend. <clears throat> I have the investors' uh, presentations. So let's take a look at the results first, and then we go to the annual reports. Smurfit Kappa says that uh, results in the first half 2020, strong performance against key metrics. Their EBITDA is 735 million pounds with an EBITDA margin of 17.5%. Not really pounds. Let me just make sure. Uh, I might be talking about pounds, pounds, um, Halatang di nag nag Europe. Uh, kalimutan ko yung signal sign pound sign. Wait. Ah, sorry. It's really euros. Oops. Pounds is the L. Euro is the no. So euro sign is the E. Yeah, sorry. It was zero. Five million euros. Napakatanga yun. Okay. Uh, strong performance. So that's 735 million euros with an EBITDA margin of 17 and a half percent. Free cash flow of 238 million. Their return on common equity is 14.8%. They've got dividends of 80 cents per share. We're very pleased with our strong performance. Our EBITDA of 734. 35 million euros with a strong free cash flow demonstrates the strength of the group. Press release. Okay. Um, check out the re latest results presentation. Show all. I have it here. I downloaded it a while ago. Let's go to their annual reports, 2019. 
leading, innovating, innovating, delivering. So there are 40, 100 company that is uh, the top 100. They've already, you know, already their production. So they've got revenues of 9 billion euros in 2019. Their purpose is to meet the needs of their customers, generate returns to their show, shareholders. So they have been continuing to deliver in a single year. Revenue, 9 billion. So they were 8, 9 billion. So very little growth, but let's see the trend. Uh, 1.65 billion EBITDA, EBITDA margin going up. Basic earnings per share. So they're a dividend paying company. Free cash flows is growing, 547 million euros. Uh, the company is positive, a world leader with operations in 35 countries. Uh -huh. mm, converting plants, forestry plantations, your revenue per quarter, their gross sales volume. So a lot of their volume in terms of million tons, uh, metric tons, so 1.3 million metric tons on container board. Other paper and board is 300,000, 1.4 million corrugated board. Other paper paste packaging is 100,000. So a lot of metric tons out there in the world. Their scale is what sets them apart. Uh, Europe is 7 billion euros. We are the European leader in the production of corrugated packaging, container board, bag in the box, la la la, including mills, plants. So we are a packaging leader in a growth sector and they've got innovation, they've got virgin, they can recover uh, paper fibers, recover paper facilities, distribution, consumption, and a lot of customers. Sustainable Sustainability is what they are big in. Uh, our culture of innovation is based on experience, science, creativity, and data with state-of-the-art facilities, ensuring that we are ready for the challenge of the future. Creative design thinking, supply smart, automated packaging solutions. So automated packaging line, SKG engages with businesses using a proven six-step methodology, eSmart. What does this mean? Our eSmart process is designed to improve all aspects of e-commerce packaging, from packaging line to supply chain to customer experience. Um, example, our, uh, using our expertise in eSmart service, we identified a sustainable packaging concept for Jardine de Loande. He's a leading flower grower in Colombia that would protect even the most delicate blooms through a complex e-commerce supply chain while delighting the recipient. The beautiful, beautifully designed and branded packaging is 100% recyclable and biodegradable. The new packaging designed for a wedding bouquet line contributed to sales growth of 300%. Shelf smart. So what is this? The right shelf ready packaging is proven to boost sales quickly and cost effectively, giving our customers maximum brand benefit. Shelf ready packaging. Example of their customer, a German yogurt pro uh, producer was facing a challenge in a highly product, uh, competitive market and decreasing market share. So their packaging didn't stand out on the shelf. They weren't communicating with their target market. Smurf at Kappa worked with the customer to create a fresh new design with improved brand impact. Eye tracking technology confirmed that the new design stands out with increased base visibility of 37%. These were the flowers. Paraplacket Planet Packaging seeks to address the waste and challenges of litter that ends up in our oceans and landfill. So all the people in the environmental um, environmentalists will love this. They continue to lead and educate and inspire their stakeholders to understand the role sustainable packaging can play in addressing the challenges of waste. So this is for some beers. We are working with customers and stakeholders, including Top Clip, pictured here. These solutions will include tr alternatives to traditional fruit and vegetable packaging, safe and green, a paper-based solution to additional wood and plastic pallets, a lightweight sustainable alternative, and a portfolio of products to replace single-use plastic in the bundling of pans and bottles. So uh -huh. let's just uh, go through all the stuff in their own uh, earnings report. We welcome, embrace the challenges, delivering on our vision. Okay. Um, it's another milestone, realized to be a globally admired company. It's an 80-year company. So it's an old company. They're a leader. And I think that they have a great uh, market position in this growing paper packaging business. Our vision is to be a globally admired business. Market position is to expand in Europe and America, become the supplier of choice, operational excellence, investment in people, capital allocation. Let's measure their progress. You could already see that. Okay, so... Um, They've got 9 billion euros, so this debt of 3 billion is nothing uh, in, a, in a year in terms of sales. Free cash flow is also big, so it's fine. Earnings per share, health and safety, CO2 emissions, risk identification. Yeah. 
All of these are in their earnings reports. Reducing CO2, carbon dioxide, striving to be a global leader. Okay. Uh -huh. Too long. 172 slides. Let's find uh, what's interesting in their annual report. Total return of Smurfit Kappa versus FTSE. So they are better than your FTSE. So they're an outperformer too. And they've got dividends. I don't think it's a 10x company, if you're asking me, but I think that it's a company worth watching. Uh, I do believe that there is a lot of uh, uh, business going into this front. So let me just show you a few things that are actually interesting uh, within this secular trend. So example, I said that TerraCycle uh, is an interesting company that might get listed in USA. Uh, in August 11, 2020, this is an article sponsored by NASDAQ. Invest in TerraCycle stock to buy a stake in the future of consumption. Well, um, it wasn't the first crowded, cr it wasn't the first crowdfunded startup. TerraCycle is the only one that is turning our trash into an investment opportunity. Company has roots in a Princeton College dorm in 2002, that's 18 years ago. It's gaining traction among equity crowdfunding watchers, eyeing in a low minimum set to invest in TerraCycle stock. So uh, the company is actually uh, helping turn uh, your potato chip bag, coffee capsule, cigarette butts, beauty and oral care disposables, child car seats, disposable contact lenses, and packaging. The list is endless. The company generated, so this is still a small company. So if Smurfit Kappa is the leader, we're going to also look at some startups that might go list in the market. Not really a super startup, but it's not yet listed. So this recycling company has uh, raised money in a crowdfunding platform uh, on a start engine crowdfunding platform. This company generated $27 million in 2019, up 35% from 2018. Who are their partners? Procter & Gamble, example. The Thai detergent brand illustrates the process. They created locations, collect Thai packaging where local recycling solutions are limited or simply not available. Uh, okay, so they are also working with Walmart, Sam's Club, Target, and PepsiCo. Tide has a source of recycled colored plastic that can be remolded to make new products. So start with the loop. TerraCycle is now helping customers with its loop system. Products as diverse as mayonnaise, hand soap, orange juice now come in multi-use containers. And um, right now, uh, Loop was also helping um, Walgreens and Kroger, offering nearly 150 beauty grocery household. Why invest in TerraCycle? As often, uh, the world's managers need to have a better ESG. It's called environmental, social, and governance behaviors. This one is an investment in that disruptive, revolutionary idea. And uh, this investment, however, is still in the private space. I took a look, actually, and I wish that it's listed online uh, in the market. It's not yet in New York Stock Exchange. I, uh, I tried to search TerraCycle uh, preliminary offering dated November 2017. I hope that a SPAC actually, uh, hope that it lists to a SPAC this year or next year. This company is important in my view. TerraCycle operates in 20 countries, uh, recycles waste streams, traditionally considered not recycled. Even though we, we were only formed in August 2017, our wholly owned subsidiary TerraCycle has been in operation in the U.S. since January 1, 2014. The company's submission is eliminate waste. Um, you can see that the company is actually uh, not a startup. They've got a lot of company, uh, a lot of partners, very entrepreneurial. The founder is Tom Jackie. Tom Shaki. Uh, you can actually see videos about him, significant public exposure. I hope that they actually do an IPO, <clears throat> but so far not yet listed. But if you know it, let me know where, if it's going to hit a SPAC this year. Uh -huh. A few things to, to invest in the industry. Let's see. This is an interesting... Um, um, market understanding of what's happening within the industry. Uh, I'll show you a few examples. So you've seen H&M, Ikea. Okay, wait long. Let me just uh, make it bigger. Value engineering is the process of redesigning packaging from the ground up with the aim of saving money. So let's see, environmental friendly packaging sample. Slopes and Town is a Dutch brand. They sell belts, socks, and other accessories, and they're now using environmental friendly materials. The box drives reusability, brings out all the elements of the Slopes and Brands Town, town brand to the consumer, says the founder, Irina. 
Shane is a Vienna-based jewelry studio focusing on simple yet elegant design. Production is fully sustainable too. Okay, uh, Echo Boxes. Origin Performance is a UK-based brand incorporating sustainability in every aspect of its sportswear business down to the last thread of their clothing. We also see Monday's Child is a British company selling young girls' clothing for special occasions, also use um, biodegradable products. Biotica is a Polish manufacturer of soy candles, scented waxes. They go above and beyond to leave a smaller footprint as much as possible. UAU projects, we could see that all of these are paper packaging. Why is it so, so important? Now, let's take a look at Amazon. A lot of boxes. Ordered six flip charts. They turned up individually in six boxes. Amazon packaging really blew our mind off waste. So the world is really um, wasteful. Talking about billions and billions of boxes here. It's not just a few. So if corporations of this size can put the heat on the government, it means that consumers who want to associate with brands that are environmentally focused. Large corporations are spearheading the initiative to help their public image. So there's a shame uh, name and shame brand aware, awareness campaign as well um, in how we should uh, actually recycle or think about the corrugated cardboard. Corrugated cardboard is the go-to solution for packaging sustainability because they are organic. Cardboard boxes come in many shapes and box and sizes. A simple cardboard is over 80% biodegradable. And as a company, we need to reduce waste. So there is this plant-based packaging solution. This is a bio-based plastic or corn plastic, uh, PLA. Consumer behavior, sustainable packaging, consider a redesign, adjust your pricing, la la la. There's a lot of things happening in this space. I'm just uh, sharing to you the aspects. I will also share to you the first half presentation of Smurfit Kappa. So what did they do this year's pandemic? The quality business consistently delivering, SKG in London. SKG throughout the pandemic was still an integral part of the day supply chain. They approximately donated 2 million euros in um, a lot of communities through PPE. They were also uh, delivering for their all shareholders, 32% reduction in carbon dioxide intensity, good margins, five years cumulative dividends paid, uh, very strong capex, five-year cumulative capex, and then five-year free cash flow. So it's a very well-run business in the last 80 years. It is leading in ways of working remotely as well. So using Supply Smart to deliver solutions uh, to lower the cost, a thousand number of customers prepared um, virtual webinars, uh, Zoom fatigue, investment in IT infrastructure in recent years allowed the group to adapt with flexibility. At the height of lockdown, SKG had 9,000 people working remotely from home. Who are their uh, sustainable partners? So they are leading everything. SKG is supporting the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, and they have committed to align their carbon reduction target, carbon dioxide footprint, within the, with the science-based target initiative. So this is part of our decarbonization, decarbonization secular trend. So clean tech, fuel cells, solar, electric, wind, hydro, all of this is part of that secular trend. Leading and understanding stakeholders, the opportunity for packaging. So far, products, uh, the consumers are voting with their dollars. Consumers reject a brand that is based on unsustainable packaging. 55% of consumers are purchasing a product because it is reusable or biodegradable packaging. So expect manufacturers to take the lead. So this is an example, providing sustainable, effective solutions, replace the plastic trays. Uh, so this is 100% compostable, remove the foam fillers, enable quicker packaging. So replace polystyrene like this. So the egg is now like this, and this is like this, okay? Leading in sustainability, a lot of investments in that craft liner mill, Austria, but they've got so many mills all over the world. New box plant in Spain, digital printer in Mexico, Fracture France, craft liners. I think like this is also something that additive manufacturing with more sustainable solutions. We're going to go paper-based solutions. U.S. and Mexico passes the Amazon FFP, 100% recyclable, over 600,000 savings to Reem. New volume stream for SKG.
let's innovate with new products from concept like this so that the, the beer can be like this. And then the delivery, so that's what they're doing. Innovating in how we deliver our solutions, leading the, leveraging the pipeline of strength to there. Recent trends, a beer company demand has increased by 400% in the last four months. SKG had the skill and expertise to continue to supply their high quality packaging along with their surge in demand. Recent trends, eBay in June 2020, they requested 5 million boxes for delivery in 10 days. SKG had the skill and expertise to continue to supply their high quality packaging along with the surge in demand. So um, actually, China, it's more grabe. Like, uh, I, I got an industry stat. It's like 70 billion boxes. Amazing. I think like now we're talking about 100 billion boxes. Too many boxes. Group 2020, half-year highlights. So group revenue. So margin is good. EBITDA. So dividends, cash flows, corrugated price in line with expectation. Their successful startup of group's largest expenditure product in Austria. America's resilience in every fiber. Deliver our disciplined and effective capital allocation in the last 13 years. Let's see, from 200 million, now it's about 600 million euros in free cash flow. So they have balance sheet strength. They can do MAs, dividends, capex. So this is a really huge company. This is a leader. Long term industry outlook is huge. So container board demand is just growing and growing and growing from 4,000 in 1990. Uh, 4 million tons, sorry, we're talking about 14 million tons that will be 25 million tons, which means that this company will keep on growing in terms of the following trends, sustainable packaging, e-commerce, corrugated boxes as a merchandising medium, and they are the material of choice for all the brand owners and private label manufacturers. So they are confident in their future prospects. I'm also confident in that. They're a quality business. For the people and then um, profit, world-class asset base, and uh, they can deliver on their vision to be a globally admired business, dynamically delivering secure and superior returns for all their stakeholders. It is what you are made of that counts. Uh -huh. So some guidance for the year. Uh, no need for that. More efficient components developed by Vitop, increasing production of new ventilators by Italian company Isinova. So they're rising to the challenge as well. We are using our skills to react, adapt, and pivot to the needs of our customers. We change our production line for our employees, hand sanitizers, filled and donated at our bag-in-the-box plants. We also have visors made and delivered across Murfit Kappa, packaging for delivering chemical reagents to support in the COVID-19 testing kits. Thousands of boxes across the business donated for food packages to also help the vulnerable. Smurfit Kappa is recognized as an essential service, critical part of the supply chain. It is going to continue to support logistics, collection, and recycling. So, ta-da! Very strong secular trends. Do I have time? Okay, since I have time, we're going to show a video on Smurfit Kappa. Or, you want to watch this, some... Uh, you can't invest in Tom, Tom Jackie, TerraCycle. But he actually shows you a lot of uh, good. See, that's very long. Eh? It's a, uh, what should I share to you? Smurfit Kappa, talks to CNBC. Uh, probably this one na lang. Watch this. Let's talk about the pandemic and Smurfit Kappa's rule now, there. One thing we've all been doing, I can tell you I've been doing a lot, uh, is, and thanks to coronavirus, of course, and lockdowns, we've been shopping online like mad. And whatever you're buying, you'd think it was right good news for the companies that make those brown boxes that are landing on our doorsteps with increasing regularity. But it's not quite as simple as that. So let's find out why and join Tony Smurfit. He's the big... I don't know why it disconnected. Wait up. Me and my bad internet. Wait up. Okay, uh, you can watch it for yourself. <laughs> Big Boss, he's the uh, chief there, executive there. of Europe's biggest Those paper ones. and packaging manufacturer. It's Ireland's Smurfit Go Kappa. Watch. Tony, an absolute pleasure having you with us, my friend. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, something I ask my lockdown leaders every week is this. I'm going to ask it right now, just briefly. What were the challenges, my friend? What were the challenges of running a truly global company um, during lockdown? And was there anything secretly that you loved about it? 
Well, the first, hi Aaron, the first challenge was uh, to learn how to use all these kind of new technologies. So I suppose uh, all of us uh, who are a bit techno, technophobes have, have to become experts in this L area. So that's the first challenge. <clears throat> what, what we did actually in running the company is we got up to speed real quick on, on Zoom calls and uh, I was running a lot and uh, I got to know my dog very well and she got to know me uh, and I think she loves me more than anything. So, so I think that, that was this kind of a, uh, that was the secret of the, the lockdown for me. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, because I was reading, I was reading uh, some of the research. I think you were, you were traveling something like 250 days a year. And I can tell you, as an aviation geek myself, um, I miss flying very much. But listen, let me ask you this. Um, how has the increase in online orders helped your business? And I'm just wondering, was there ever a, a concern at the, the initial phase of all of this that you actually may run out of boxes? Uh, no, <clears throat> the biggest challenge for us has been to make sure that our, our people were safe, Aaron, and to make sure that they worked in a safe environment. And that was the, the concern that we would have had early on with, uh, when nobody knew what was actually happening, was that, that um, we were going to be able to staff our factories, which meant that uh, we would get our, be able to get our boxes to the, to the customer. I mean, one of the things that gives me huge satisfaction, honestly, Aaron, is that we did a survey in May to all of our employees, 46,000 of them, of which 20,000 answered uh, and said that, you know, how did we do? And 95% of them said that we, not just me, myself, but everybody in the senior management group, 95% uh, of them said we looked after them, we kept them safe, we looked after their welfare, we made sure they were communicated with. And that, allowed, that has allowed us to supply all of our customers very well. And, you know, one of the things that really came out of this, and you said at the start, you know, you wouldn't get any boxes, with, you wouldn't get any online um, shopping if you didn't have boxes, but you actually wouldn't get any food either mm. uh, if you didn't have boxes. So, you know, we've been deemed an essential uh, product in the world uh, for, for, by all governments across the world. And that's what kept us open and that's allowed us to continue to deliver okay. and deliver successfully to our customers. Yeah, yeah, recently you announced profits. Your profits were actually down some 13%, but you described it as a, another sort of bumper, bumper year kind of thing I mean, or a well, strong, <clears throat> strong performance. Why, why is that? Because I suppose we were heading into a down year anyway, Aaron, because paper prices have been moving down last year. Uh, and that sort of translated into this year. So we already knew that we were going to have a down year and that was forecast by everybody, but it's still the second best uh, first half in our history. Uh, and, uh, and I think that shows the, the, the resilience of the business model that we have and the, the asset base that we have. I mean, well, as you said earlier on, we operate in 35 countries uh, with 46,000 people and each country has its own different dynamic, but overall pulling it all together, we still came through with the second best year in our history. Are you, um, can I ask you this, since the topic, uh, the, you know, the subject in all our lives at the moment is COVID-19, are you innovating um, or coming up, can, is it, even if it's possible, coming up with a, with a product that may be um, resistant to, to the virus? Uh, I, I, I don't, I, I mean, you know, we're essentially corrugated box makers. So we've, we've obviously have products that help in the whole uh, protection of the virus, such as dividers. I mean, you see plastic dividers, you can equally do the same with corrugated dividers. Um, you know, so, so we don't really have a product that is, is actually working to, to alleviate the virus per se, but we are actually co contributing to, to some uh, uh, medical research to help find, find uh, cures or maybe not cures, but maybe uh, treatments for the virus through UCD, UCD Dublin, which is uh, the, the one of the largest universities in Ireland mm. uh, with, the, with the head of infectious diseases there. So we're trying our bit to try and help uh, find cures. I just I listened to the previous uh, speakers there uh, and companies like, like ourselves are really trying our best to, to help this whole pandemic. I'll show to you just to, to end this. Actually, I just want you to understand the loop. So what is TerraCycle doing? It's not about uh, you being able to invest in TerraCycle, but just to let you see what's happening in the future, what millennials are doing uh, in this uh, revolution. The Sustainable Packaging Revolution is a good documentary. I know it's already past the time, but why don't we watch even just two minutes of each video? It's a revolution. I believe in it. Watch this. Plastic debris is scattered across every corner of the world. Since the 1950s, the global economy has produced more than 9.2 billion tons of plastic, and 91% of that has never been recycled. 
This is a very complex issue. There is the heightened cost of sustainable materials, consumer hesitancy to pay more, and poor recycling infrastructure. It's a big list, and it's not just up to consumer brands and packaging suppliers to fix it. One of the biggest obstacles in producing sustainable packaging is the lack of materials that can be leveraged at scale. But now, materials suppliers are changing the game with sustainable resins that are cost competitive at high volumes. To learn more, we travel to two materials suppliers who are driving the circular economy forward. I'm Stephanie Baker. I'm the Director of Market Development for KW Plastics. We are the world's largest plastics recycler located in Troy, Alabama. Uh, we recycle, reprocess high density polyethylene as well as post-consumer polypropylene right here at our facility. I would venture to say as much as 90% of our raw material comes from packaging primarily bottles that are found in the kitchen, in the bathroom, um, even out in the garage. We purchase bales of this material from throughout North America and even beyond our borders. And that is size reduced, it's washed, and our end product is a post-consumer resin that is then sold back into many applications, uh, the majority which is actually packaging. We are actually seeing a lot of innovation incorporating post-consumer resin in packaging beyond the bottle. The first that comes to mind is caps and closures. We're seeing a lot of popularity with our polypropylene in that application. Also tubs, tubes, disposable type of items such as the takeout trays, the, the deli platters, things like that. Really our largest challenges in industry right now is gathering the raw material to be able to supply the demand, which is exciting that brands understand the value of post-consumer resin, but it's also a challenge in these are the same brands in many instances that are putting packaging on the shelves, that consumers are, are purchasing and putting in homes, and we need help to be able to pull these materials through the recycling bin so that we can in fact continue to supply the, the brands and meet the demand for post-consumer resin. We have moved beyond the education and outreach of recycling. I think people generally understand that recycling is a good thing, but they don't always understand where they can go to recycle, what they can put in the bin. And uh, I think we don't talk enough about the value of recycled materials. It truly is a commodity. We are paying for this material and we can't get enough of it. For every package that goes to a landfill, there's a price tag that is associated with that if it is a package that can be recycled. The more that we can do to really let people know that there, there's value in their packaging, there's value when they make that split second choice whether to put it into a recycling bin or a trash bin, and there's value all along the supply chain in terms of, of jobs and revenue. And I think that that is a large challenge that we have as an industry is really connecting that economic message to the package. So post-consumer recycled resin isn't the only way for brands to increase the sustainability profile of their packaging. Compostable or biodegradable materials are also a huge part of this conversation, but even they need to be disposed of properly. There are several agencies that will certify your finished product or resin for compostability or biodegradation. The different standards you can achieve include industrial composting, home composting, soil degradation, fresh water, and ultimately marine water. As you move up these categories, it becomes more difficult for packaging to decompose naturally due to the lack of bacteria. If biodegradable plastic is disposed of in an oxygen-rich environment, such as composting, it will break down into biomass, carbon dioxide, and water. But if it's disposed of in an environment that lacks oxygen, it will dissolve into a greenhouse gas like methane. Where the plastic devolves heavily influences the type of impact it will have on the environment. Or so was the case until PHA. Located in Bainbridge, Georgia, Danimer Scientific offers access to the world's first marine water certified bioresin. 
I was attracted to to the industry really because I'm an outdoorsman and it really uh, bothers me when I see plastic floating down the river and those kind of things. I have a real passion, I guess, against litter and pollution. And I saw it as an opportunity to make a difference, to help. <laughs> at Danimer, we make bio-based plastics at, out of renewable materials that will either compost or biodegrade. The biggest material breakthrough in packaging today is our PHA polymer. This polymer is marine biodegradable where the incumbents are all industrially compostable. So we're making a huge multi-step change uh, all at once here in terms of capabilities. That's the real trick is you can have a resin that is renewable and biodegradable or compostable, but you gotta make it work. It has to work in, in the application. And that's really what, what we're focusing on now is kind of moving the industry from industrially compostable solutions to home compostable solutions and marine biodegradable solutions. The production process for PHA is really unique. We start with soil bacteria and we feed it vegetable oil and it goes through the fermentation process. It fattens up and it multiplies. And Guys, I have to stop the video. Uh, you can learn more about Danimer sci Scientific. So I'm going to type it in. So it's also in USA. Danimer Scientific, uh, you could see that it is not listed. Danimer Scientific, formerly known as Meridia Holdings Corp. And MHG is a biopolymer manufacturer headquartered in Bainbridge, Georgia. Danimer Scientific owns the patent for Nodox medium chain length PHA or polyhydroxy alkanotes, MCL PHA. It's, got, it's founded in 2004. It is a privately held company. Um, it says here, though, that, kadam, oh my God, it's going to go SPAC. So uh, I will cover Danimer Scientific uh, on why his company chose to go SPAC. Uh, let's see. I'm happy with the SPACs, guys. I love SPACs because we can invest. We don't need to uh, wait for them to be public, like IPOs, wherein we can't even pay the IPO price. It's always 100% higher already. What can a retail investor do? Danimer Scientific has announced that it will go public via SPAC with Live Oak Acquisition Corp. Uh, the video transcript. Okay, why, why don't we watch this? Um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. We can invest finally. So, um, what's the name? Live. Live Oak, Danny Murray Scientific. We can finally invest in some technologies that we believe in. All right, welcome back to Yahoo Finance. We're off the session highs. The Dow is now barely positive. It's up about one point. But something that should bring a smile to the face of all of us concerned about the environment is news of uh, a company that is going to become publicly traded, Danimer Scientific. They've entered into an agreement to merge with, we're getting used to these specs, right? Live Oak Acquisition Corp. And this will close perhaps at the end of Q4, but let's bring in the CEO of the company to talk about what this is going to mean. And we invite into the stream right now, Stephen Crosscree, Danimer Scientific CEO. Good to have you here. And, and I'm not a scientist. I'm gonna try and say this as best I can biodegradable and compostable bioplastics. There's a, there's a documentary right now about how all of us were sold a line of garbage, forgive the pun, about recyclable plastics. But this is the real deal, how so? Well, let me explain uh, in, uh, in layman's terms how it's made. In, in nature, uh, this, this polymer occurs naturally in bacteria. So what we do is we feed vegetable oil to bacteria and when they've had enough to eat to satisfy their own metabolic processes, like us, if, if we continue to eat, we get fat. So they store this converted carbon into a polymer called PHA, polyhydroxyalkanoate, as energy reserve. So the scientists don't like me saying this, but we, I call it bug fat. So we extract that bug fat from inside the microorganism. And the beauty of this is that is the plastic resin. So if you make an article out of it, like a fork or a, or a straw, and it, when it finds its way into a landfill, or if it gets disposed of in nature where it shouldn't go anyway, but if it does, it's consumed by bacteria naturally and it returns to the environment. 
That, that's what's so exciting about it. Hey, Steve, it's Julie here. How expensive is this process? It sounds like it's pretty highly specialized and also how scalable. So uh, we think it's very scalable. Um, it, it, right now, you know, from a cost standpoint, it, it would run, you know, 50 percent to double uh, fossil fuel prices. But, you know, I think what's important to remember is that the fossil fuel industry has been around for 70 years with lots of time to optimize and biopolymers are just getting started. We're partnering with some of the, the, the best CPG companies in, in the world, people like PepsiCo and Nestle, who understand that we need their scale to help us scale. Right. So it's a mutual beneficial uh, uh, arrangement as as we uh, can develop products for companies like this that use tremendous volumes. Uh, that's going to help us get the scale that we need to drive the cost down closer to fossil fuels. But I would just point out that, you know, there really is no requirement to sell these materials for the same price as fossil fuels when you have such a value added product. It's renewable and fully biodegradable. Hey, Stephen, Brian Chung here. So uh, I guess going public is going to help you raise the capital to build that scale up. But I guess I'm just wondering why specifically did you decide to go the avenue with a SPAC here? We've heard the sure. user that you could avoid the volatility. You only need to pitch to one person. So what was the argument for your company doing this? And then why specifically Live Oak? Well, Brian, uh, great question. Uh, we, we found a used fermentation facility in Kentucky that we purchased in December of 2018. And we have a plan in place to bring that online to, to retrofit it to our process in a two phase approach. Phase two is supposed to get kicked off late spring, early summer. Phase one uh, came online in March of this year. So as you can imagine, we picked the worst month in human history to launch a new technology. So that really upset our plans for uh, getting phase two going, but we have customer demand and customer contracts that you know we want to support and so it was important to find some alternate source of financing ultimately going public is a great solution for us because it gives us access to you know public market debt and, and using the stock as currency if need be or or you know when the time is right uh, but in the meantime you know we, we our plans were being delayed uh, because of the current environment and we we kind of came across the the SPAC format, we realized it was a much quicker uh, way to get to market than uh, uh, to do a traditional IPO. And uh, we we were introduced to the Live Oak team by some of our current investors. And uh, there was just great, great chemistry there. We thought they had great backgrounds in the capital markets, which was something that we, we thought as a partner would be helpful in, in this process. Stephen Crosscree is Danimer Scientific CEO. We wish you the best and look forward to you coming back after we can start buying the stock. All the best to you, sir. Thank you, Adam. So, guys, um, this ends my free videos for to you for you. So we discussed. Uh, well, I didn't show to you some of the companies. Uh, so we we said about Smurfit Kappa Group. We talked about so a little bit on Danimer Scientific, KW Plastics was uh, this. It was mentioned last night during the vice presidential debate, and I want. Okay, uh, so KW Plastics is uh, not listed. It is uh, a recycling company, plastics recycling division. So we can't really uh, buy it in the market. It's not listed. The recycle is also not listed. But uh, yeah, so if you have any ideas do share it uh, on our uh, videos uh, we will appreciate and uh, we would love your commentaries if any and uh, that wraps up today's video i hope that you learned something and uh, please subscribe to the channel tell your friends about it thank you very much